A bench power supply is necessary when working with electronics. Nowadays I'm using this variable bench power supply. But those can be expensive and if you only need the common 3.3V, 5V or 12V, there is a cheap and efficient solution. You can convert a regular ATX power supply of any computer in a bench power supply with only a few components and solder. I actually used one of those before I got my variable one and it even can deliver more current than the variable one. But mine is kinda beat up because I like to play with thin wire and even somebody named John Mullenders asked me to make a video about it. So I guess I gotta do it now. First things first, what do we need? Firstly, six binding posts for our five voltage rails and one ground rail. I'm gonna connect positive 3.3, 5 and 12 volts and negative 5 and 12 volts. If you don't need the negative voltage rail, you can just ignore that part. One little switch for turning it on and off, obviously. One 3mm green LED and one 3mm red LED with current limiting resistors, of course. Around 220 ohms each should be fine. And in addition some shrinking tube to protect the connections. As you can see I already did the first step on my power supply. I already drilled all the necessary holes for the binding post and the switch. Those two holes for the LEDs were already in place. And the big hole was also already there. I call it the suicide hole. It's time to open the supply. But I warn you that we are working with high voltage that can kill you, so don't act stupid and always be careful. On the inside you can see that I already cut my wires to a shorter length. You have to do that with your wires as well. Firstly I mounted the binding post the switch and the LEDs inside the case. I soldered the resistor to the anode of the LEDs and used shrinking tube to protect the connections. The colors of the wires tells us what it represents and normally you can find a chart on the supply which explains it as well. Orange is 3.3 volts red 5 volts, yellow 12 volts, white negative 5 volts, blue negative 12 volts and black ground. Now I strip the isolation of all those wires and solder them to the binding post. You can choose the order by yourself. And remember to use shrinking tube as often as possible. But don't solder 4 black ground wires and 1 red 5 volt wire to the binding post. Now we have to find out whether the power supply has most of its power on the 5 volts and 3.3 volt rail or the 12 volt rail. In my case, because this is an old one, it's the 5 volt and 3.3 volt rail. So I'm gonna save one more red 5 volt wire for later. If your supply has most of the power on the 12 volt rail, then save one yellow wire for later. Okay, the binding posts are done. Now we connect the purple 5V standby wire to the resistor of the red LED and ground to the negative side of the LED. The one extra red wire connects to the resistor of the green LED and ground as well to the negative side of the LED. The green power on wire connects to one side of the switch and the ground wire to the other side. Okay, almost done. Remember the extra wire we saved depending on where the most power is? We need to put some dummy load on the supply to keep it stable when we only need small amounts of current. If you use the 5 volt rail then use a 5 ohms at least 5 watts resistor. With 12 volts I recommend a 24 ohms and also 5 watt resistor. I use two 10 ohm resistors in parallel. Connect the 5 or 12 volt wire to one side and ground to the other. Try to keep it safe with shrinking tube or tape.
And that's it. Here I'm testing whether all binding posts deliver the correct voltage. And everything seems correct. The real nice thing about those binding posts is that you can also just put a bare wire in this little hole and screw it tight. I hope you liked the video. If so, don't forget to like, share, subscribe and be sure to leave suggestions for next project in the comment section. And I will see you next time.